this is the last section in our um, algebra review unit, and we're going to be simplifying rational expressions. Um, a rational expression, a rational term is just a fancy term for a fraction. So if you notice that we have um, all of our equations here have um, a numerator and a denominator. And um, we're starting off with multiplying and dividing because multiplying and dividing are a little bit easier than the adding and subtracting that we'll get to next because multiplying and dividing don't need a common denominator. You do need a common denominator when you add and subtract. So when we're multiplying and dividing, what I really need to do, the first thing that I want to do, number one step is factor. So we talked about factoring before. I need to factor. I need to pull out what I can. Um, the easiest way or the very first type of factoring that you should do is factoring out a greatest common factor. So in this first one in the numerator, I notice that I can factor out a 6 and a b. So 6 and b get factored out. That leaves me with inside of here 3b plus 7. In the denominator, I can factor out a 10b. So that leaves me then with a 3b plus 7. I like when I start to th see two things that match here. Um, and the last part, there isn't anything that I can factor out there um, because the top one is a product, that's a single term, and the bottom one is a quantity that has two terms in it. Uh, so once I get it all factored as best I can, then what I'm looking for is identical variable parts, or sorry, identical quantities is what I really meant to say, identical quantities. And so, for example, 10b and 10b are identical. 3b plus 7 and 3b plus 7 are identical. 6b and b minus 5, I cannot, absolutely cannot cancel out the b's because the bottom right right here, that b minus 5 is a quantity. It has to stay together. That parenthesis um, goes around it. So the b can't be separated, and it's all because that minus is there. So if there's a plus or a minus between two terms, you've got to make sure that we... Um, keep that quantity together. So when all is said and done here, I have 6b over b minus 5. That would be my final simplified answer. That's all I can do. Division is pretty much the same. So when I'm dividing, I'm going to start the same way. I want to factor first. Um, but the difference is when you divide, we don't divide by a fraction. I'm sure you remember learning back in the day, you flip and multiply. You multiply by the reciprocal. I say flip and multiply. And so instead of me working with um, dividing by b plus 7 over 7, I'm going to do b squared plus 15b plus 56 over 7 times 7 over b plus 7. Okay, so I still need to factor that upper left, and so I'm going to um, just break that down into b plus 7, b plus 8 over 7 times 7 over b plus 7. If um, factoring is a struggle for you, um, please make sure that you watch a video or make sure you talk to me about it. Let's get that fixed um, because we're going to be doing a lot of factoring in this particular section. So then I'm looking diagonally or up and down for identical variable parts or identical quantities, and um, I'm going to want to cancel whatever is identical. So in this particular problem, all I'm left with is b plus 8 as my final answer. I knocked everything off of the denominator, and so b plus 8 is where I end. What I'd like you to do, please, is um, give number 3 a try. Pause the video, give number 3 a try, and then revisit in, when you're finished. <clears throat> So hopefully you took time to pause the video and um, work through the problem. Um, I got to this point in my completely factored form, so I factored and flipped and changed it to multiplication. And so now I get to do the pleasure of canceling the quantities out. So I've got a 2, a 2, an m plus 2, an m plus 2. That leaves me with 6 over m plus 4. And that is it for that problem. Um, I want to, again, 
invite you to give number four a try, pause the video, and then revisit when you have completed it. So I ended up on that one with seven over four A. I am going to um, put down the answers for the remaining problems on this page. So again, you can work through and practice and see how you do if you're struggling and then check your answers as you go. But before the, I do that, I do want to talk very briefly about problem number six. And that's because I have that negative. If you take a look at problem number six, I have that negative that is in the upper right. And when you're factoring, you want to make sure that you deal with that negative. Um, before, especially if you do the snowflake, because it makes it very difficult to run through the snowflake. You, you won't get the right answer if you leave the negative in there. It's, it's hard to work with. It's got um, some touchy things that you have to keep in mind. So I'll just rewrite that as negative x squared minus 12x plus 32. And so I'll factor that inside part, and then I'll just leave when I flip I'll just leave a negative one in front of that, um, whatever I factor that down to be. So again, um, I would urge you to pause the video and give this a try, give your factoring a try, um, and I'm going to fill in the rest of the answers so you can check your work as you go before we move on to the adding and subtracting side. Okay, so a couple things that I want to point out. Um, here are my finished answers. You can check your work on that. Again, if you have an issue, feel free to email me. But that negative one that was left in problem number six, that negative one that was here, I just pulled that out in front and made the fraction negative because that's all that's going to do and left it over x plus three, f, x minus four. The other kind of funky thing that happened is if you notice on problem number eight, I had two quantities left in the denominator that didn't cancel out. And so, and that happens that's not um, unheard of or whatever it's not a big deal and so when I write it I just write them next to each other some people will multiply those through it's not necessary for you to do that I guess if you want to you can I wouldn't mark it wrong but it's not um, anything that you need to do okay so moving on to the next page when we add and subtract it's really important that we have um, take the time to find a common denominator. Um, what I like to do is factor first if possible and then go ahead and look for the common denominator because each of the factors are going to make up the denominator. And so um, in a problem like number nine, I can't factor anything in there. So my common denominator, my least common denominator is going to be 5b minus 2 and b minus 1. So that means the first fraction gets multiplied by the b minus 1, and the second fraction gets multiplied by the 5b minus 2. And so I will distribute that top. That leaves me with 5b squared minus 5b. Distribute the top on the other side, plus 20b minus 8 all over the common denominator, b minus 1 times 5b minus 2. Order of that doesn't really matter. Simplify the top, 5b squared plus 15b minus 8 over b minus 1 times 5b minus 2. Now, if you can factor the top, give it a try, see if you can factor it, and see if you can cancel anything else out. But um, in this particular problem, you're not able to do that. I don't have, I can't find two numbers that when I multiply them, I get um, negative 40, but when I add them, I get positive 15. So there's nothing that I can pull out of that that's going to make this um, a simpler form. So, um, my next move then is to um, work on, let's try a problem where I have some subtraction. And so I'm going to move on to problem number 11. Again, I'll go back and uh, put all the answers in for the other ones so you can check your work as you go. But I want to do one where I'm subtracting. And so I will move on to number 11. Um, in problem number 11, not only am I subtracting, but I also have a spot on the bottom that I can um, factor something out. So this is 3n times n minus 3. 
and then this other factor is 2 n. Now they both have the standalone n. So when I look for my least common denominator, it's going to be the 2 and the 3 and the n, and then the quantity of n minus 3. I don't need to do the 2n and the 3n separately. That n, that standalone n is a factor of itself. So my least common denominator is 2 times 3 times n times n minus 3. So when I look at my fractions here, and I'm going to change the color so it stands out, the first fraction has the 2 and the n, so it needs the 3 times n minus 3 part of it. And I multiply that on the top and the bottom, 3 times n minus 3 part of it. The second fraction has the 3n and the n minus 3, so the only thing it's missing, the 3n and the n minus 3, is the 2 portion. So I just have to multiply the top and the bottom by 2. So in this first one here, I'll do the 3 times the 3, which gives me a 9. And then I have to distribute that 9 through. So it's 9 times n minus 3 is the first fraction um, over, I'm going to rewrite this whole thing as 6n times n minus 3. So this is 6n times n minus 3. Um, and then it's minus, I'm going to leave these separated for a while because I have to address this minus here. And so the top becomes 2, um, distribute that through 2n minus 4 over 6n times n minus 3. Now this minus, I could write it as plus a negative, but that negative has to be distributed out throughout that second portion. Don't forget that common mistake that I see. So I have to address that minus plus negative, but make sure that it goes through the entire second portion. So this is 9n minus 27 minus 2n plus 4. That's minus minus that I had to bring through there. That's all over 6n times n minus 3. And then when I simplify that for my final answer, this was a minus 2n here, I get 7n minus 23 over 6n times n minus 3. And again, if I can factor, I want to look to see if I can factor and pull anything else out and simplify. And I can't here, so that's my final answer on that one. Um, keep in mind, a lot of people, when they get here into this part, I'm going to highlight that and get here into this part, see where I'm looking at. They want to start canceling things out. Oh, I see an n minus 3 and an n minus 3. Don't do that because when you do that, you're going to get back to where you started and, and you don't want that. We multiplied that in. That's why it's there on both of them. This is different than multiplying and dividing. So leave that there. The only time you're going to simplify is when you get down to the end if possible. Okay? All right. So Let's do run through another subtraction problem. We're going to run through problem number 12. And so I have a 3 times k minus 4. And on the second fraction, oh, I notice that I can simplify this. I can take out a 2 off the top and on the bottom. So that's 1 and 2k. And if you do that, it's going to save you some time in the end. If you miss that, it's not going to hurt you. But if you do that from the beginning, it's going to save you some time in the end. So now my least common denominator is just the 3 times k minus 4. So I'll multiply the second fraction by the 3 times k minus 4 over 3 times k minus 4, because the first fraction has it already. But keep in mind, I have to t deal with this negative, so this is plus a negative here. So I have 2 plus negative 2k times 3 times k minus 4. That's a little bit ugly, but I just wanted to make sure that I wrote that all down. And then my common denominator, 3 times k minus 4. Okay, So that negative 2k, so this is 2 plus negative 6k times k minus 4. So now all I did was I multiplied these two pieces together. And again, you can do this in less steps than me. Um, if you 
um, want to, if your algebra is good, but I just want to show you where I'm getting things. Um, so then I'll distribute that through. So this is, I'm going to move it over this way. This is 2 plus negative 6k squared plus 24k over 3 times k minus 4. And you don't have to multiply that 3 times k minus 4 through. You can if you want to, but it's not necessary. But I'll end this problem with negative 6k squared plus 24k plus 2 all over 3 times k minus 4. And that should be my final answer. Again, if you can factor the top um, and take anything out of the bottom, do it. If you can't, um, then of course you can stop right there. So um, just a review. Um, let's say, let's see, I'm going to have you guys try one. Why don't you go ahead and try problem 15? So pause the video, try problem 15, and then turn it back on and check and see how you did. That's another subtract one. Uh, and then I will um, go through, pause the video, and have you check, do the rest of them, and then check your answers um, when you're finished. Okay, so I finished number five. Um, keep an eye on that term, last term on the top, the plus 10. Don't forget that that minus 2, that's a plus negative 2, plus negative 2 that gets distributed through out there, leaving me with a plus 10, so minus 2x plus 10, um, and then... I uh, combine like terms on the top. Again, check to see if you can factor this. And, and if you can, cancel things out. If you can't, then you can stop right where you are. Um, and this one doesn't simplify any further than that. Uh, all right, so I would recommend, again, that you try the rest of them that are on here and see how you do. I will put the rest of the answers on here, work through them, show my work, and then you can check uh, before you sign off and work on your homework. So I'm just going to take a few moments to go through the ones that we did not complete. And so that was number 10. I got 15n squared minus 28n minus 4 over 6 times the quantity n minus 2. And then we didn't do 13. So for 13, 2p squared plus 7p minus 4 all over 2 times p plus 3. And for number 14, 47n minus 12 over 6 times the quantity 5n minus 2. Pause if you need to look at the work. And then lastly, for number 16, I got 4p squared plus 17p plus 5 over p plus 3, p plus 1. So your job now is to do 1.4 homework, evens or odds, and I will see you tomorrow. Um, come with any questions that you have. We are going to do a factoring review, then you'll do a review at home um, for in preparation for your um, test and your test A day is September 10th, B day is September 11th. I will talk to you soon.